Father Romek, uh, as a missionary, we are coming from different places, and in your case, you are coming from Poland. And here in Zambia, we can say you are one of the first missionaries to come some good years back. So, Father Romek, could you tell us how did you find Zambia by that time? And then, as you were here, which place, which parish, which work you were sent to to be a missionary? It's true, I am one of the first. Whether when I came, we were just four, not many. Those three, first Pania plus one another, Father Willie Scalante, who was here from Philippines. Then I arrived, and we were still very, very small group, quite international group. I had different expectations when I was coming to Zambia. I knew that our community, international community, SVD, works with fathers from different places. Uh, I found it quite interesting at the beginning, although some cultural background were very uh, surprising. I only came. I remember we had a nice chatting in the evening. On the following day, one of the conference, he was just like, I thought he was angry with me, but it was his way of uh, acting, like a greeting, not so much greeting, a smiling greeting. But in the long time, it was already there. So after some time, I already got to know it, and it was quite interesting. Uh, I found Zambia that I'm a very potential country. It was still the first uh, president there, and we were in different countries comparing to today, but many things has changed and uh, I had to settle quite quickly. I remember the first night I found it very hot. So even at night I was going to running for some water I was checking, but <laughs> still I slowly, slowly I settled. So it was no problem. And after short settling, I was sent to learn la the local language Silozi. But even before I was quite lucky because it was the time when the Pope came to Botswana. In a short time, after a few days, I already could manage to meet even personally Pope John Paul II in Botswana. It was the time I was visiting. So it was quite interesting. And later we will reach. Uh, we met some SVD conference in Botswana. In a short time in Zimbabwe, it was very good introduction because I had opportunity to talk to them. I remember talking, asking some questions. They were laughing at me because I asked this and other things. Uh, like for instance, I asked. Do I need to ask permission to have a beard? And they were laughing at me. Beard? Do whatever you want. No problem. <laughs> sure, that was okay. the beginning. Oh, interesting. And uh, which, which parish, which place you were uh, at first? You were sent? I was sent to learn for a Silozi in Mongu. And I remember that it was the time when the airlines increased the tickets quite a lot. And I was to fly to Mongo by plane. I reached Lusaka and there was no another plane to Mongo. So I was staying up for a few days in the hotel in Lusaka, which the airline gave me. I came back to the same airline. I came for free. And then they just increased the tickets. So later I spent another one week when I could manage to, to fly and to learn Silozi. It's a very interesting thing before I went to the parish that I um, found the people so friendly, nice, but yet there was a bit of distance to a person who is new. And I wanted to so badly to know the local language, so I put lots of stress. I remember after two weeks I went to one of the shops in Mongo where I was learning Silozi, and there were some young ladies. And I could hear them talking about me and laughing. I, said, no, no, no. I was not happy. How they can laugh at me? I don't understand. <laughs> I said, no, I have to learn very quickly that language. So another, after another one and a half months, I was in similar situation. Again, there were some ladies, some men who were talking. And I was already able to answer. So I said, what do you want to do? 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 So, I understood it. So, that was the beginning of my joy that you could manage to communicate. And after the language, I was sent to Sasheke. It was the first mission when I went again with 
her father Willy, where we are together there. It was new the beginning, but I was still learning silosi and trying to know the people. That was quite interesting. Okay, interesting. Uh, can you say something about your experience as a parish priest? Sheki, where was Chile? Where did you work? <laughs> Joys, challenges, something about it? Well, I went to Sasheke, it was very interesting. Because for two weeks, uh, we didn't know who is the parish priest. Because they sent us, um, the community was asking, who is the parish priest? And we didn't know because the decision was not clear yet. We are just to take over from the Russian priest who were leaving. So after some time, we knew it. But when it comes to me, I probably I will be the last one to run after some posts. They do come, but as much as possible I try to leave them for others, because we have some conference who like posts, you know? They could have even five or seven posts or more. But with me, I just have <laughs> any small one and it's enough for me. So, the first time at the parish priest I was in Dambwa, which was a big community already that time. I enjoyed it, but I think I enjoyed more as being the assistant. So later when I went to see Chile, and that time there was one father who wanted to leave to Poland, and he was living almost for two years, so we we're hunting. I was already a parish priest, and he was still there, and he said, no, go ahead, go ahead. So I was doing some work. Uh, I found it quite challenging because the community there was quite a lot demanding and uh, that part of Zambia up to today there is lots of uh, witchcraft and the people uh, do challenge those who have little faith. So I'm sure even they challenge me but I somehow uh, trust the Lord and the Lord with the Lord persevere so later I, they had to, to send me another helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Father Romek, as well, uh, you, you worked as a parish priest, but uh, in the mission you had different uh, kind of mission. Uh, something to do with uh, prisoners, a Bible, and a vocation. So all these ministries. Something that you can share about your experience, what you like most, what has uh, made you, you know, to go for this kind of, of work, of mission? Uh, well, you are saying, what make me to go for it? And when it comes to first ministry, the prison, I was not very much willing to go for it because uh, I always thought, when you go as missionary to another continent, why being a prison chaplain? What is it? You know, we have so many other more important tasks. Uh, but that time I was a provincial vocation promoter and it was this additional task. And when the, uh, the vicar general asked me, could I have it? So first I was a bit shocked. But after some time, I got to it quite well. I found a way how to operate. Uh, first introduction by another chapel, and it's late already. It was not easy because uh, there were lots of restrictions in the prison and I was not free in how to move, how to enter, how to do my pastoral freely. So what I did, I went straight to the officer in charge and asked him, could I do my task freely, whatever I did. He said, Father, no problem. Just write a letter, we sign, I sign for you, put a stamp. And that's how it happened. The following day, uh, I went with such letter, it was my day for duty. Again, the officers were trying to play something, ah, you cannot go, whatever. I said, look, it's my time. Oh. So very quickly I learned that the same like the Polish army, if you have good relation with the main officer, the others are dancing. So that was happening that time and up to today I have been a chaplain in the prison for a number of years. In fact, still informally I am representing Zambia for the Catholic chaplains. We organized some program internationally, including the program which was in Brazil. I reached even Brazil. So uh, I learned quite a lot in those prisons around and when we had international, international conferences as chaplains. Again, there was a nice program on reconciliation in Rwanda after this uh, uh, killings and so on genocide, which took place in 1994. We found a very interesting program how uh, Hutu and Tutsi can manage to 
unite together. So it was a very enriching program, the prison, which I had done and I'm still doing up to today. I would say it's very interesting and some prisoners, uh, first they were surprised because when they saw the way I was operating, they said, ha, this guy, he must be an army officer, you know, because he's something else. And when the officer from Zimbabwe came and they asked, who is this Muzungu Mkua? Walking freely with you, you are free with him. And then the main officer said, he's Father Romek superintendent. And from that time, I'm <laughs> superintendent, so I manage. So this, I deal it freely with the prisoners. I do like this work and I believe the people are, especially the inmates, are also quite happy with me. So there it comes to prison ministry. The other ministries which I've been involved, first vocation program. Vocation program I started quite a long time ago, 1993. I became the first vocation promoter. That time I was very busy parish priest in Dambo and doing a bit of vocation work. But from 1998, I started doing uh, fully for six years as vocation promoter for Zambia, Zimbabwe and Botswana, later party for uh, South Africa. Uh, that time, I must say, I did a lot, but what I used to do when I was moving to different parishes, different groups, I used Bible approach. So when I go, want to go to a parish, I tell the parish priest that I will do Bible program. So the parish priests were very happy, so they were coming me come to the program. So I could do for one day the Bible program, another half a day general vocation program, and then the program about SVD. And the parish priests were very happy because they didn't have to pay me anything. They just had to sponsor for the uh, program, they people, parishioners, or they use quite, quite a lot. Uh, so that program was going fine and also that program as I move, was moving to different places. I combined it with my hobby, which is fishing. So I was catching fish and catching men. If one <laughs> asked me what was more successful, why was more successful catching fish or catching men? I would say it was like 50-50, but so sometimes it was more successful, I think, with the fish, but our freezer never got empty and we had a number of fish. But when it comes to the use, I use the approach of forming use. That we are forming use and then would they join the diocese or other congregation or they get well married. That was, was uh, trying and after today I'm trying to make them first to be responsible, to be good people, good Christian Catholics, and finally, if it's anything, to be good SVD. Uh, we have some who join, some they are well married, not long time ago, just last year, one of the boys from our Catholic Vocation Club, he asked me to prepare his wife for marriage blessing, I bless his marriage, and they are very happy, so there's possibilities, in fact, they already gave a testimony to our Vocation Club as marriage encounter. This is all working quite beautifully. And the ra last ministry, it was uh, vocation, prison, and Bible. Put, uh, Bible. You already mentioned something. Yes. Can... Uh, Bible is not that when I was asked by the mission superior about four years ago to co co coordinate Bible ministry in Zambia, that I could do it because this work I've been doing for years and years, and especially when I became the provincial vocation promoter. I committed myself quite a lot to the Bible. I never had went for any higher study. I didn't make any doctorate or any higher degree. Just simple, that's what I do. And what I do with the young people of adults, it is pastoral approach and learning my, my experience. What uh, the people need is basic of the Bible and practical responses to their questions. Which, so that's I've been doing as a vocation promoter and as a biblical coordinator. I must say when it comes to our mission and our conference and approach with the Bible as biblical coordinator, I would say that uh, I am not the most successful because the prophet cannot be welcome in his own country, which well, we are trying to do. Whatever he can manage, I try here and there, but I can see that some conference are rather smiling. Ah, what can he say? So now he didn't finish any biblical study. It's okay, and right now we have someone who finished the biblical study, I'm sure. He's already doing some work and will be doing it for the future. But even if I stop being, a, as I'm going to stop at the end of this year, I never stop doing the work for myself and for others as with the Bible. I like the Bible. Bible is part of me. And recently, 
two years ago, uh, two days ago, we had the feast of Saint Jerome. So Saint Jerome said, "The ignorance of the Bible is ignorance of Jesus." I take it quite nicely. But today, one of the doing youth program, one of the youth asked me why, why you SVD who are doing the Bible don't have Saint Jerome as your patron. I said, "Yes, he is us, but not only us." but also the others. <laughs> okay, well, well done. Uh, Father, you were mentioning about your uh, vocation program. Mm -hmm. Are you able to remember how many, how many priests did you fish during this, those years you fully gave yourself for the vocation program? Uh, it is not only in the past, but up to today, I am the side vocation promoter. In fact, this year someone supposed to go to the postulancy, but Fortunately, he changed his mind and some others also changed. Uh, so, if I count only SVD, maybe it won't be uh, quite many, maybe between 10 and 15. But I count uh, even those whom I helped to join the other congregation. I would say it probably uh, be more than 30, okay. wow. which I would say. Please praise the Lord for it. It's not me I'm helping. If someone asks me, Father, shall I go to the seminary? Shall I be a priest? I said, I tell you only what is holy order, what is priesthood about. And the decision is between you and the Lord. Talk to the Lord. The same if someone asks me, Father, shall I marry that woman, that lady, beautiful lady? I said, no, it is between you and that lady. Because if I ask, if I tell you, marry her, and later she appears, not a good wife, don't come to complain to me. Get I don't blame want. on you. Yeah, surely. <laughs> That's how it is. All right. Um, Father Romek, uh, what would be your words for new missionaries, someone who would like to, to come to Zambia, some words of encouragement, some words of, uh, you know, helping that person to, to know a bit more of uh, this mission here? And of course, uh, through all your, your experience, all these years here in Zambia Mission, what can you say? Uh, well, I would say first that Zambia is very unusual mission when it comes to uh, us as VD, as conference, fathers, brothers, who are committed here or not committed for a long time. I would say we in Zambia we experience a number of conferences who are not committed for a long time, that's why we need still conference who would come and be committed for a long time. Then we can be more, su more successful. So I would say those who are thinking seriously about coming to Zambia, Zambia is a beautiful mission. The Zambian people are fantastic. You can really find lots of joy because Zambian church is very alive church, very dynamic. And the people, if you really give them, give them possibility of uh, encourage them, to be committed in different ministries, different apostolates, they can do a lot. Comparing to other uh, countries, but we are in Europe, where they want the priests to do everything. Here, the laity are very capable. If you empower them, they can do a lot. So one who comes here uh, should be open to work with the laity and can be assured that find lots of joy. And Zambia's still young mission, I think, needs lots of uh, it has lots of potential for those young missionaries and we need, need them. Those who feel that would like to come and do the evangelization, there's still some potential even for primary evangelization. If they are very much welcome, they shouldn't worry what will happen, how it happened. But no, they don't need to worry to be preoccupied with so many things, but just trust the Lord, all will be fine and uh, the conference who are here would welcome. Okay, yeah, for Zambians or from outside of Zambia, they are really welcome huh, to join us here in our mission. Father Romek, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your sharing. And may God keep on blessing you as you keep on working and being a good missionary here in Zambia. God bless you and God bless all those who have been in Zambia, who are still in Zambia. And I am sure those who are in Zambia, they are enjoying past life.